Right. Hey. Hello. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to uh, Let's Play, courtesy of Hesman and the Fuckers. We're glad to have you here today. It's me, Hesman, and the other guy, Fat Fuck. We're going to be playing Katawa Shosho. Katawa Shujo. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. I could be wrong, but I think it's Katawa Shujo. Katawa Shujo. Katawa Shujo. This is a game that is uh, made by Four Leaf Studios. It is, from what I can tell, has a little bit of a Japanese influence. Oh, just a little bit, huh? Just a little bit. Um, as well? Yeah, I'd say so. Just a little bit. What I can tell, uh, the English translation of Katawa Shujo is translated literally into the words crippled girls. Uh, uh, or cripple story, or something like I that. I think it's crippled girls, but like regular speak, it would be disabled or disability girls. Right. So, without further ado, I suppose we should just jump right in. Neither Pessman nor I know anything about this game outside of the name and the title translation. Yes. All right. Ooh, it's got nice graphics. Yeah, it does. A white breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This foreshadowing, using naked in the first screen. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal the little tiny bit of knowledge I got from the options menu. Yes. I'll let you discern that yourself. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. Okay, so it's a schoolgirl game. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. Mm. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. He Sao says, Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 o'clock p.m. Ah, yes, the note. Slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. <laughs> as far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter and the walker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. True. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only signs of time passing in this stagnant world. Okay, so this is definitely going for like, we, we're gonna make this art. You think so? I think this has the vibe of they wanna make it art. Well, let's see. Let's keep going. Maybe it's just a uh, facade. It probably is. Which we should also let's play. Yeah. At facade some point. Is great. After this one, though, we can't interrupt this for one second. No. Full playthrough tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. The slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow when the foot stops me, interrupting quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. Question mark, question mark, question mark says, Hi! He Sal? You came? A hesitating, barely audible question that I yelled. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. Huh. I turn to face this voice, says the beta male. The yeah, voice really. of my dreams. And my heart begins to race. An 800 meter dash. And here we go. Story begin. He's shocked. Evil Nako? I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. <laughs> Pathetic. Pathetic. Beta, definitely. Definitely huge beta. Ahem. Yes, I, uh, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. Yep. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. Ah, uh, let's look at the grammar of that for a moment. A shy, joyous smile that Ooh. makes me so tense, I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. Is he, sh like, smiling that shy smile, or is she smiling that shy smile? I think that she's Does smiling. Does she sell sh sea cells by the seashore? She is definitely smiling the shy, joyous smile. And, he, and he's tense Because, enough. look, uh, clearly he's not smiling in this. Well, you never know so, if it's good or not. True. I think that he is so taken aback by the smile of this girl that he cannot move. Okay. 
He's so awestruck. As many the beta male knows that when a girls look at you, that's kryptonite. Full neckbeard mode. Full neckbeard. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What's oh, happening? Okay. He has a heart attack! Yeah, really. <laughs> my heart games. is pounding now as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim to go over itself. Bum, 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 bum. So, uh, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Yes, we are. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Cacophonous? That's a vocab word for today. Indeed. What does cacophonous mean? Cacophonous means an incredibly dissonant and loud noise. Ah. So just like... <laughs> like, imagine dynamite going off and doors slamming and bells ringing and just like... Just chaos. This noise chaos. Cacophonous is loud yet dissonant. Mm hmm Okay. Iwanko flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she rides herself because she fell over. <laughs> As if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine. And she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. Uh-huh. All the while. While. Not wail. The anxious beating of my heart grows louder. So, Beta. <laughs> His heart is racing because a girl is looking at him. Or well, tried to meet him somewhere. Well, it was a secret meeting. I... It's understandable. A girl asked him to go up and meet him one time, and his heart is pounding out of his chest. He's nervous. Most certainly. My throat is tight. I doubt I can even force a word out if I tried. You see... I wanted to know. Perfect. If you'd go out with me. Ooh. I stand there motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Hesau? <laughs> I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Wow, he is having a fucking... He's so... He's having a panic attack he right actually now. is. It's, I have never had one, but is this any of the familiar symptoms no, of a panic attack? No, they don't attack? have... They don't cause pain as far as I know. Okay. Spikes of pain on the arm sounds like a heart attack yeah. for real. My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open and tear. Okay, he has a heart attack and goes to the hospital and meets the cripple girls. Maybe. That's gotta be it. Yep, he's got an arrhythmia now. Hello! The beating in my chest. Oh my stops. god, he does and have I a heart attack. Weak at the knee. What? I did not at all think that was going to happen. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck? John! That is unbelievable. It was too much for him. A girl asking him out was so mind jarring. The oh, world around Lord. me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky. Iwanko running towards me. All these fade to black. Down, look, the arrow is yeah, down, exactly. now it's not over, it's down. <laughs> the last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanko screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. How terrifying do you think it is for... What's her name? Iwana, Iwanko? I, Iwanko? Iwanko? I don't know. Iwanko... She asks this guy out, and he just fucking passes out. And, yeah, just, <laughs> what in the fuck are we getting ourselves into? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, he's up to a heart monitor. Shit, he did have a heart attack. Four Leaf Studios presents... Katawa Shujo. A Michael Bay production. Inspiration by Raita. Raita. Writing by Anonymous22, Aura, Corporal oh, Crud, and some other people. I can't even see it. Everything, Kagami, Wastarot, Silent Cook. Silent <laughs> Cook. Music by Blue123 and Nicole Armafi. What in the Art fuck? Art by Getty Terrar, Camafish, and Pimmy. Damn. Art by Milwaukee, Ramez, and Raide. Additional art by Climactic, Doomfest, and Ujovi. These are great names. FME Animation by Mike Inell. 
Fucking, they go so fast. Yeah. Directed by Delta Rede and Ujovi. Engineering by Delta. What engineering could this have taken? I have, I don't know. Uh, production by Corporal Crud and Studico. Corporal Crud. I like that name. So the internet Clock put in the this together. Room. Yeah, they definitely did. This is an internet game. Wow. By the neckbeards of the, the internet. deep depths of the bowels of the internet. The underbelly. The dark, seedy underbelly. It's been four months since my heart attack. Dear Lord. He got fucked. He did. And that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised in one hand. Wow. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. That you're a fucking neckbeard? Arrhythmia. Synonym. <laughs> Arrhythmia? I don't even know what that means either. This it game... Means, no, it means an irregular heart rhythm. Okay, that would make sense. Like, you, don't, you aren't able to keep a regular heart rhythm. Mm. A strange word. A foreign. Alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. Yes. A rare condition that causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It could be fatal. Wow. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Huh. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. He never I had really anything as, as shocking as a girl asking him out in his life. I guess it just, had, it just triggered that. It just happened to be the wrong place at the wrong time with he, the wrong thing. He's so left-brained and autistic that he, everything yes. comes easy to him, but a girl asking him out... Is this world-shattering. World-shattering. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. They're both in the hospital now, too. Wow. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, <laughs> it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Wow. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room was, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all of the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. Well, that's the way of it. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had turned into a class project. Yep. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, my only parents came by on a regular basis. Or only my parents, rather. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After wow. six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't <laughs> touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. Damn, that sucks. He was he got friend zoned because of he a medical got condition. Shit on. That is shitty, dude. This All is right. a shitty one. This is the hospital? This is Neckbeard Uprising, the prologue. Really, though? <laughs> he Before he goes on. Storm. Yeah, he goes on to take up arms and defend the Neckbeard race. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. Okay, no shit. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable for the first month or so. I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait to see if the treatment and surgeries work. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries left on my chest slowly changed its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are well enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Because he hates life. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, <laughs> although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, because I'd never done it before. Yeah, really. And I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. Amen, brother. But I <laughs> love the stories. That was, the, that was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the kind of book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. We could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, 
All the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. Amateur psychologist hour? Oh, yeah? The so pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot as the heaviness of my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while looking at the ceilings if I was going to cry. It sounds like he has some major depression at this point. Well, of course, I'm surprised he hasn't caught staff. Really? But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. The doctors did not keep me hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. At least he's trying. Yeah, really. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even short of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There you die! Yeah. There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside just to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Yep. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Miss Al. How are you today? What do you think, Doc? <laughs> I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. Wow. We have all your medication sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. Wow. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself. Look at myself. Feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? A shitload of mess. Medicine. The absurdly long list Whoa. of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters, and they don't actually... Quat... Qu quinidine! Huh. Pembutol, Veropamil... God, this is just getting silly. Is this actually the drugs people have to take when they have this it condition? It may be. Who knows? This is insane. I'd say so. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions, and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read it, but it's so fucking futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life? Every day? I'm afraid that is the best we could do at this point. Wow. However, new medications were always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Mm-hmm. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? what? Please, please, calm down. Peace out. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it makes me... Did what he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever, if my concern shows, it's ignored. Hmm. Not understand. like he has a say in the school yeah, really. he goes to. He's just a fucking... Yeah. Just a sheep in the herd. Mm-hmm. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least, not until we're certain that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken to your parents about the transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? You are. It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Wow. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Mm-hmm. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Yeah, really. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. So you pretty much have to go. We went out there and had a look at a couple of weeks back. I, you know, I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people in your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. 
don't call it a goddamned opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and well, it's not the same one. A special school. That's an insult. An insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. Yep. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help, one way or another. Wow. Your father's right. And many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. Yes, they do. That's what a disability That's kind is. That's the nature. It's going to hold you yeah. back no matter what. You know, you can't run a mile... With no legs. ...if you're not able to move anything below your legs. Mm. You can go a mile. True. But you can't run. It, it, mm. It's the nature. You're just... I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be insensitive, but that is the fucking nature of a disability. Yeah, I mean, really... It's a terrible situation we found ourselves in, but yeah, that's the truth of it. I remember one time I like fucking kicked my pinky, and I was just able for like fucking three minutes. Yeah, terrible. I know. You couldn't do shit, I bet. Yeah, I know I couldn't. It was just like, ow, fuck, mm -hmm. ow, I'm gonna walk on my heel. Yeah. Shit. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. Wow. I don't care. A person that had to be held by a disability—that's what a disability is. Yeah. Got, well. We are the underdog of the internet. So, the yeah, we, same thing. we are the neckbeards here, I guess. In a sense, yeah. Yes, well. Well, you know what? Uh, seeing as I have a neckbeard. I, okay. I have a beard, and that beard does travel from my chin to my neck. So, technically... No, yeah, I technically have a neckbeard. Uh, my, my beard also extends up onto my face and around my lips, and it's everywhere. Because I'm a lazy dick who doesn't shave. I'm just fat, so my neck is part of my chin anyway. Oh, well, there you go. And that, I mean, really, a mustache with handlebars could be considered a neck beater for me. Mm, good. Yes. <clears throat> oh, but I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But <laughs> what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. You know, I could, they should give me the option to just nullify this entire game. And choose, no, the I agree. and choose to homeschool and just game over. Well, and I think, I, I realize the the decision here as him being a high school student probably doesn't have a lot of sway and probably knows that he doesn't have a lot of sway. But the way they make it seem as if, or rather the doctors and the parents, mm -hmm. they make it seem like if he protested enough, he could probably just go back to his regular school. Yeah, and he doesn't. And... If he had protested and they forced him to go to the disability school, that would be one thing. Yeah. But this is him. He just kind of lays down. I mean, again, the beta nature of this person had a heart attack from a girl asking him out. So. But <laughs> if he had any shred of non-beta, he would stand up and want to go back to his regular school, would he not? And be like, listen, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Are you kidding me? I'm, all, I'm on all this medication. If I can't go back to school, yeah. then fucking keep me here. It's not like... If I can't go back to school, then fucking keep me here. Yeah. Tom, I'm ready to go to fucking school. Exactly. Real school, not this fucking bullshit, like, hey, it's so fucking independent, uh -huh. and it's like one of my colleagues went there, like, yeah. fuck this. And it's close no, to us. fuck that school. Real, go, uh, real school or no school. What's I, the point of going to school if it's bullshit? Well, <laughs> that's true. I, you're, you're right. What is the point of going to... Uh, but, on the same token, most schools are bullshit. Well, that's an entirely different topic that I'm willing to delve into entirely for seven minutes. <laughs> so, or rather, six minutes and fifteen seconds as of right now. So, yes, most of school is bullshit. I will grant you that one hundred and ten percent. No objection whatsoever. Before we delve into this, though, I want to just say, if he had stood up for himself and he got shit on, that'd be one thing. Yeah, but there's a still there's a chance of him not getting shit on, so he should at least try and say fuck you, mom and dad and doctors. I'm going back to regular school. Yeah, and at which case it would be their turn to say fuck you. You know, it's not like he's disabled. He has a heart condition. You know what I mean? People with heart conditions. If Miss has a heart condition. She went to exactly. You no, know, she dropped out of school. She dropped out because of her disabilities. Well, but listen, if you think that you can pull off going to a regular school, right? Yeah. And you only have a heart condition. It's not like you have a learning disability. It's not like you have like a, 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 a severe physical. You know, I went to a I went to a regular high school, and Miss, we had tons of people with learning disabilities. Yeah, and like, and I gotta say, Miss also went and worked at Taco Bell for a while. True, she had a job. Yeah, two which jobs. Which is way more physically demanding for a person with arrhythmia, mm -hmm. which she has, than a fucking person like who's just sitting down at a desk. Yeah. 
Like, I'm sorry, I think the regular school is completely, inc- unless Japanese school or whatever school this country is set in, is just completely outrageous. Yeah, hard. I mean, and you'd get a doctor's note for PE. Done. Yeah, you're, there you go. You're good. It's high school. It's not physically straining at all. Yeah, I'm not even going to play pro sports at the college or something. Exactly. You know, pro sports at the college is a common thing. <laughs> um, it's funny, I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest the do. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something I can... Something about how I can go back to school anyway, but... <laughs> nah. But no, why? Why? I am saying, the fact is, I know it's futile. Okay, he knows it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. Does he know it's futile, or does he just believe it's futile? I think he knows it's futile in the way that somebody's really convinced of themselves. And is it, is it futile or futile? I would say futile. Okay, well, colloquially. Indeed, colloquially. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. Valium. Or morphine would do it. Yeah, really. There isn't really, there really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to the disabled school, what was it was even like. I must have tried to put a positive spell on this. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think to get me through this. At least I still have something, even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start. My life isn't over. In fact, it's just beginning. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life is like. Ew. Hey, just a fucker here. We're going to go ahead and take a pause here at this chapter in a wood, and we'll see you back in just a moment. Mmm. What a good time to pause this Act video. Act one, life expectancy. All right. This is the end of part one. We'll see you again for part yep, two. I'm waiting until the screen freezes. And here we go.